Which real life cheat codes do you know? Write in the comments what you think about it. Which real life cheat codes do you know? Enjoy the show. Story 1. Forgive everyone who wrongs you, but like a dog that bites, don't forget them. Just don't get even. Don't make them know how you feel. Don't say that thing to shut them up. Don't even tell them. If you need to tell them you've forgiven them, you haven't forgiven them. Just erase the debt. And when you feel it stirring again, forgive then again. Doing this has brought me more peace than I can adequately describe. Story 2. While what I'm about to say is well known in places like our language learning, I'm always surprised how many people don't know about it. So if you're hearing this for the first time, welcome to today's Lucky 10,000. Anki is a free piece of software that lets you create your own flashcards for nearly any subject. Unlike regular index card flashcards, you can put media in. So, let's say you need to learn how to identify every song by Chopin within the first few notes. You could do that, I guess. Or study world flags. It's most well-known, I think, for studying languages and for med school, and there's whole helpful communities built around that. Beyond to media aspect, Anki automatically schedules your cards to try to maximize the efficiency at which you learn things. And it's not baked in. You can dial in the algorithm to make sure it's perfect for your brain. Finally, if you're learning a language and struggling with listening, there's a piece of software, also free, that works with Anki, where you can make flashcards out of things like TV shows, movies, YouTube videos, etc. Anything with accessible subtitles. It's called Subs2SRs, and it literally feels like a cheat code in learning to understand spoken foreign languages. The speed at which I've gone from, this is a garbled mess of nonsense sounds, to, oh, I understood that, is well, if I said how quick it was, you'd think I was making up bullshit. You still have to put in the work, but Anki with subs 2 SRRs makes all that work so much more effective. Story 4. You learn this in sales, slash marketing, but it's handy in casual life too, especially if trying to carry a conversation with people who don't like to talk much. Also helps you become a great listener and ideally gets the other person talking even more than you do. To have a good conversation and keep people engaged, never ask a question that can be answered yes, no. Or instead of a question, use a call to action. Question example. Instead of would you like to meet, ask when would you like to meet. Call to action example. Instead of when would you like to meet, say choose a time to meet and provide your availability. Or just throw out a suggestion like I am open to meet at XXX. The person will either accept or suggest a different time. And they're less likely to say a vague yes or no. Another conversation cheat code. If someone replies with short answers to your questions and you want to get them talking a bit more, ask, can you elaborate on that? As a follow-up question. Or you can tell a little white lie where even if you understand their answer, still ask, I'm not familiar with that. Can you explain more? Pretty good chance that they actually will share more. And often they didn't intend to be short with you. Story 5. I worked at a gas station and my coworker put the smokes down. Guy grabbed him and told us he wasn't able to pay and call cops if we wanted cause he just lost his home and all but his car. Was super polite and apologetic, but said with the stress he needed to smoke. He had quit a few weeks prior, too. Said either call cops or he'll be back that week to pay. He did get arrested for something else some people at the park and ride him involved in, but did eventually pay back a few weeks later. I think it all came down to he was polite and apologetic, but didn't know what to do in his situation. So manager said, it's just a pack of smokes. There are many worse ways this dude gonna gone, but he decided to steal smokes to go calm down. She let him and he came back weeks later to make up for it, and donated money too. I think that really taught me a lesson. Sometimes people do stupid things cause life hits them and they lose their ability to think. And as said, people living at Park and Ride got him into shit briefly, but I hear he's turned shit around since paying back. Politeness helps. Even if we did call cops, we agreed to ask them to go easy on the guy. He didn't have a weapon and was just freaking out. Story 6. Stop giving a shit. Seriously, just stop. So much of what you worry about will quite literally never happen. And when it does, it is usually much easier than you would think to get out of it. Sure, there will be times when shit really hits the fan, but that's just life. Spending all of your free time nail-biting and shaking at the fear that something might happen is agonizing, and it kills your drive and spirit. I know this sounds like just telling a depressed person to cheer up, but I am typically a very, very anxious person. And one day this just clicked for me. I only have one life. Why spend it worrying about what might happen? Story 7. In general, people want to help. Knowing this, if I ever have a problem that requires a call to a support line, I just act confused. Be it late fees, charging error, broken item, whatever. 
I have them explain to me why this thing happened and how do I avoid it happening again. Once I break that CSR voice, scripted conversation topics, and get to the real human part of the person, they get to the point of wanting help you. I have late fees waived, flights or hotels upgraded, free replacements and other things. I just let someone have the opportunity to be helpful and kind and most take it. Story 8. Silence is a tool to be used and is especially powerful when used with courtesy. For instance, when you need to get help from customer service, be kind, clear about the situation and what you need, and then be silent. I have an issue. The shipped product underscore 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 on order underscore 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 arrived broken slash non-functional. I need to get this replaced. How can you help me get this processed? And then be silent. If they try to give you runaround and not my problem energy, you state back what you need and be silent again. Most people get very uneasy when they are in a conflict situation and the other party is silent. Story 9. There's an organizational law that the square root of the number of people in an organization do half the work, and everyone else splits the other half. For example, in a group of 100 people, 10 of them do half the work, and 90 do the other half. It's important to quickly assess who the working and non-working people are and how they're treated. Then decide which side you want to fall on. If you don't decide, you'll be put into a group which usually will not be the one you wanted to be in. Story 10. This is a cheat code for successful group projects and teams. Don't be afraid to ask what sound like a dumb, obvious questions, even if you think you already know the answer. In group situations especially, don't assume everyone is working with the same set of information or has the same level of expertise. Worst case scenario, the person you're asking doesn't know the answer, but now has incentive to find out. Best case scenario, the question is answered, and someone else who also needs that information slash knowledge now has it, when they might have been nervous to ask for themselves. And you've also amplified the idea that it's okay, safe, and encouraged to ask questions, which increases group cohesion. This is also a great way to onboard new people into an existing team. Corollary. Don't ever, ever scoff at or make fun of someone for asking what is, to you, a question with an obvious answer. Additional corollary. If you do know the answer to a question you've asked, give the person leading the discussion the chance to answer it first. Otherwise, you look pretentious for answering your own question. Story 11. Wet a paper towel, then scrunch it up to soak up the water and let the excess water drip out, then spread it back out. Put it on top of whatever you're microwaving and it will steam it and it won't come out gross the way some food does when you microwave, like the film that happens on top of milk when you microwave it. It also prevents splatter inside your microwave. Also, put a resident paper towel in your microwave to put everything on top of. This helps keep the rotating plate clean. Story 12. When I was in high school, at the very beginning of the school year, my freshman year, I was assigned a class that was a teacher's break and had no other students. So I went to the office and reconfigured my entire schedule to fit my interests and preferred class times, choosing between any class that still had an open seat. I did that at the beginning of every school year and into college and each semester. I had a few semesters in college where I only had classes stacked on two days a week, two of which were six-hour classes. Also, at the end of high school, I replaced classes on campus with comparable classes at the local community college which meant I received high school and college credit simultaneously. But I also got to fit two less classes in each day and left at the beginning of lunch my entire senior year. Any teenagers out there that are completely done with high school, learn my ways. Beat the system by working with it. Story 13. I used to be a trauma nurse and also did a lot of ride-along with the fire department. And if everybody starts doing this, I'm probably going to screw the country up. But it's my favorite real-life cheat. When you get in an elevator, if you hold down your floor button and the door close button at the same time, it will take you straight to your floor without stopping for everybody else. We would do it with critical patients, or if we needed to get to a person's condominium or office fast in an emergency. They used to work in every single elevator, but I've noticed in the past two or three years that it probably works in about 80% of the elevators I've been in lately. I try not to abuse it too much, but it is handy when you're in a hurry. Story 14. Muting gas pump display commercials. Works at shell stations, possibly others. When the display at the gas pump starts playing commercials, if it is the type with four buttons down each side of the display, pressing the second button from the top on the right side of the screen usually mutes the commercials. Source. Once encountered a pump display where some kind soul circled the button and labeled it mute with a black sharpie.
Edit. I usually fill up at Shell stations. No idea what other pumps are like, TBH. Story 15. Most people know that hardware stores, Lowe's HD, have cleaner bathrooms than most places. But if you are really hard-pressed to find a clean toilet, you can just walk into a hotel lobby and use their bathroom. Literally never had anyone stop me. And if you look remotely like you're not about to move into their bathroom, they won't care. Large grocery stores, Publix, Kroger, are my third choice. And not only do all of these places usually offer paper-ass gaskets, you can also phone into the store if you sit down and don't have toilet paper. Story 16, a few things. Being kind is the best way to get what you want. I'm a former retail employee. If you ever want to win an argument, look them dead in the eyes. Don't look away. They will get uncomfortable and lose their train of thought. Changing your frame of mind into something positive can do wonders for your mental state. For example, I don't want to be late. Instead, try, I want to be on time. I don't want to sleep through my alarm. Instead, try, I want to wake up on time. I don't want to get into an accident. Instead, try, I want to get to my destination safely. This truly has changed my life so much. Story 17. I regret not. Invest a couple hundred dollars in a set of jack stands or ramps and some basic hand tools and use YouTube to teach yourself basic car maintenance. At least learn how to do tire changes, rotations, brake jobs, and oil changes if nothing else. The amount of mo-way you'll save will more than pay for the cost of the tools within the first year, and you'll learn a new skill that could potentially save you thousands. Story 18. The trick to rules 1 and 2 is mostly do things to look like you put effort into how you look. Clean somewhat fashionable clothes that fit well. Sustainable hairstyle and facial hair trimming do much more than jeans do, especially if we are talking hetero men looking to attract women. Other than that, make respecting others a part of who you are without expectation of any sort of sexual, relational, or friendship return, especially for people you are attracted to. Treat people kindly and understand that the friend zone is a shitty concept that doesn't exist. You will find more friends, more relationship prospects, and a happier life. Story 19. Exercise all throughout the day. Do one little exercise like push-ups and then go back to work or whatever you're doing. 30 minutes later, do another little exercise like sit-ups and then continue with whatever you were doing. Do this the whole day. You won't get tired. It doesn't take much time and you get a whole lot of extra exercise. I've made a list of exercises that I can do quickly. Among them are running in place, sit-ups and push-ups, of course, the chicken dance, ha ha ha, rock climbers, squats, and a few others I invented that don't really have a name and would be too hard to describe here. Even stretching counts. Story 20. All right, I got food nutrient advice that can be used to substitute for green slash veggies slash fruit. Making Mexican salsa green, red. A few tomatillos, green small tomatoes. Roast them on the stove without anything applied to them. One, two jalapenos, one, two garlic cloves, diced up onion. Add some salt. Careful not to overdo it. This is important. If you have a molcajete mortar and pestle, you can grind them all together or be lazy and blend them. Walla, you have salsa that is way better than eating veggies and fruit. You can put this on almost anything. 2. Pico de Gallo. This is if you don't want salsa, but want to eat veggies, fruits, etc. This is much easier to perfect than salsa. All you need is diced up cabbage, diced up jalapenos 4. 6. Diced up tomatoes, original red ones. Diced up onions, optional. Put them in a bowl together. Slice up five limes and squeeze them on top of the salad. Mix it all and add a bit of salt. Optional. Voila. Pico de gallo to eat on your meals or as a side meal. You don't have to make whack-ass salads or overcomplicate how to ingrain veggies intakes for the most part. Story 21. The game that costs $90 pre-order is going to be free or super deep discount on Steam slash Epic slash PS plus much sooner than you think. If you're patient, you can own hundreds of games without having to pay for them. They're just as fun in a few months as they are on release day and sometimes more so because they've patched up the bugs that shipped with it at launch. The only exception is Nintendo. Those games almost never go on sale. Story 22. Mine is basic self-awareness and thinking ahead one. Two steps in any situation. Keeps you present and engaged in your surroundings and just the smallest amount go a long way when out in public and when driving. Know you have to exit in two miles. Maybe think ahead and not be in the opposite lane and feel entitled to shoot across traffic at the last minute. Grocery shopping. Maybe look behind you before you stop for an extended period of time in the middle of the aisle. Just small ways I try to be aware and courteous to those around me, but helps in building overall self-awareness and lack of entitlement. Story 23. Dave Ramsey, Money Guys, etc. boiled down to three rules to live by. 
Never spend money you don't have. Get a credit card and only use it for a utility slash car slash housing bill and pay it off right away. Never daily use. This should feel hard and you should have to say no to things you want. Emergency fund has a huge impact. Save to create a $1,000 emergency fund in your checking or second checking account. You only touch when something breaks or a similar emergency. Replenish ASAP. Save up for things you want to buy, even cars. Best way to do this is to auto-withdraw from your checking account after every paycheck into a different account, in same or other bank. Start small. $25 if that's all you got. When you can go bigger, go bigger. If you do these three things, everything else will make sense. And when you reach milestones, it will be easy to figure out your next move. Investing, a house, retirement, etc. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked the video, like it. Be sure to write comments and share your stories.